Okay, everybody, welcome. We are joined today by John Rahm, the captain of Legion 13 and the defending Masters champion. We are joined by Bubba Watson, the captain of Range Goats GC and two-time Masters champion, and Phil Mickelson, captain of the High Flyers and three-time Masters champion. Welcome, guys. So there is a collective six green jackets up here this morning, so it's safe to say we have our panel of Augusta experts. How are you guys utilizing Live Miami this week to prepare for next week? We'll start with you, Phil. This is a great place to get ready for Augusta. It gives you an opportunity to get some momentum if you play well, but it also gives you a chance to hit every shot that you're going to need uh, into Augusta. Now, Augusta has more undulation and elevation changes, but Miami forces you to hit a lot of long irons, mid irons, short irons. There's trouble on every hole. You've got to miss it on the correct side and strategically uh, get you ready for uh, all, the, all the shots, challenges, physically and mentally that you're, we're going to face next week. And Bubba? Yeah, what, what he said, it was, it's perfect for managing your golf ball. Um, that's what you have to do at Augusta and put the ball in the right spots. And like he said, it was, there's difficulty on every hole uh, out here. And with the wind up, I mean, the wind gets swirling in Augusta sometimes. And so there's a lot of things that you can take from this and learn from and, and try to manage it but then you show what you need to work on going into next week as well john i know this is your first time playing at doral so what are you kind of get, hoping to get out of this week in preparation for augusta uh well i haven't seen the course yet oh. so uh not much i can say in that regard and uh this pretty much covered everything but i've, I've seen this tournament or tournaments here many times on tv and uh i know how much of a challenge it can be and uh I think having a, you know, a high quality golf course, a high quality challenging golf course before a major can be a great thing to, to get yourself ready and uh, maybe work on some of the shots that you may need the week after like you, they were mentioning and just simply you know, try, having to execute those shots in competition setting before you go to a major can be, can be really beneficial. So we have 13 live players that are playing next week. Last year, first, second, third, and fourth place were John Rahm, Phil Mickelson, Brooks Kepka, and Patrick Reed, all live golf players this year. What do you guys think the odds are of a live player winning this year? I'll start with you, John. <laughs> oh, that is a very hard question to answer, but, you know, there is quite a few major champions in live, and there is a few that our major champion quality golfers. So uh, just pure numbers, otherwise, if you go with math, wouldn't be the highest, but I'm, I'm confident that, that one of us can get it done maybe again this year. Bubba, what do you think? About 13%. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, you know, yes, I mean, there's some, some great golf being played out here, there's some great golf being played on the other tours. And so it, it's going to be a battle, but, um, you know, I, at the end of the day, that's individual. So we don't really – we're pulling for our friends uh, no matter where they play. But it's going to be a battle, and, and hopefully it is a live player because I'm one of those <laughs> that's up there at the top, and I'm hopefully I'm in that top five or, or challenging on Sunday. Bill, you obviously had an awesome year last year at Augusta. How are you feeling heading into it this year? Yeah, I, I'm looking forward to it. I love – I obviously love the place, but it's a course where I feel I don't have to be perfect. And so when I go through – the gates and drive down Magnolia Lane, I kind of relax a little bit because if we miss it on the right side of the, of the, the hole, given the, the pin placement, if we miss it on the correct side, we can still salvage par utilizing our short game. We still have shots like the shot Bubba hit on, uh, in the playoff where you hook the wedge on 10 uh, to 8, 10 feet. You can still be creative and recover at Augusta, which is why I think it's so fun to, to watch is the recovery shots there are so exciting because the, the trees are high enough where you have a swing uh, as opposed to taking an unplayable eye or wedging out. And so uh, I think that adds to a lot of the drama of, of Augusta. And you also then don't have to be perfect. So uh, if, you hit, if you hit a bad shot, you can still recover if it's in the right spot given the pin. So if you play it strategically, know how to play it and where to go, you don't have to be perfect. We've got a room full of international media who came here to talk to you guys today, so I'm going to kick it over to them. Maybe we'll start with Tom. John, talk about last year, and it, it was just such a, a strange last couple of days for you guys, and 
at one point I think you were five behind Brooks, uh, right? And then coming back at the uh, coming back and having to play so many extra holes on Sunday. Just what, what do you recall from that? What's your your biggest takeaway from that victory? Uh, I, I think the moment you're referring to, I think it was on uh, on seven when they called it. I was four back. Um, yeah, and five minutes into the next day, I was two back, right? So uh, it's hard to say because it was a very unusual with all the stoppage and all the weather. It, it was a very different Sunday, right? So it was very much about dealing with the elements and going about your own business. You almost had to think about really is the end of the third round and then focus on finishing strong and finish and then playing well the rest of the 18th holes, right? So you, in my mind, I had to really separate those two days, uh, put yourself in position, and then Sunday Sunday round in the afternoon, try to get it done. Uh, my biggest takeaway, it's, oh, it's hard, I think. I keep going back to some of the up and downs that I made. I mean, Phil was mentioning it. It is uh, it is a golf course in where you are allowed to miss. I know he's explaining it way too easily. Uh, <laughs> in the right spots but if you know if you're in certain spots you might be able to get those up and downs and there's two moments I think to the up and down on six to get the lead for the first time and then the second shot on 14 from the trees which like he explained you have room uh, it's, you still have to execute and there's trouble lurking everywhere but uh, hitting that shot to four feet and making the birdie putt to to take that four shot lead with four to play were the the two key moments of the tournament in my mind. Hi, uh, Tim Reynolds with AP. This is for Phil. Phil, the, um, it, it's, it was a lifetime ago, obviously, but it seemed to me that Doral week in the past was that week where guys would take that Tuesday trip to Augusta and try to sneak around in or something like that. Was Doral like the start of your master's thinking? Was that when you started to kind of lock in on, on what was coming when that 04, 05, 06 and onward run? Is that... Is this kind of when your mindset changed to its master season? I would actually think that it started earlier than that. I think it would start in the off season, and the off season was a chance to get equipment that might perform well at Augusta and start hitting the shots that might perform well. And I remember uh, January of '04, I started working with Dave Pels, and we started doing some wedge work and precision iron work. And I remember coming down the stretch on 14, having to, I was trailing Ernie at the time in 04, and I needed to make birdie, and I hit, hit uh, you know, what, what we call, what I call a Pell's wedge, you know, taking a little bit off of a, a wedge shot, one of the shots that he started working with, with me three months prior to that tournament, and I executed it there, knocked it close, and made birdie. And so I think the preparation in our mind really starts before then, uh, as far as, you know, setups. Like, uh, you know, one year I won there with two drivers. Uh, I've won there with, you know, one driver. Um, I've never won there with zero drivers, but I did win the British with zero drivers. So the uh, point is that you start thinking ahead, like, what, how can I best get my golf bag makeup ready for Augusta? Uh, and you start that in the off season, And then I started preparation in January, working on those shots, and then was able to pull it off during the tournament. For Phil and John, uh, Rory yesterday said he doesn't believe golf in its current state is sustainable. Do you agree with him, and do you think that the circuits need to be reunited? Go ahead, John. <laughs> um, I, I think I agree with that statement. Yeah, I've um, every time I get asked a question like this, I. I say the same thing. I think there's room for both. It's as simple as that. And I think we have the opportunity to end up with an even better product for the spectators and the fans of the game. You know, a little bit more variety doesn't really hurt anybody. So I think, uh, I think properly done, we can end up with a much better product that can take golf to the next level worldwide. And uh, I'm hoping that's, that's what ends up happening. Yeah, I, I agree with that. I think in the end, like w we're in a transitional state where we now have, we now have competition, and 
that's leading to a lot of disruption and change, but it's also in the end product going to be, make golf more global where the best players travel more. I, I don't know how it's going to end out exactly or what it's going to look like. I've, I'm putting my trust in, uh, in Yasser and, and, and where, where the game's headed more globally, but at some point when it gets ironed out, I think it's going to be in a much better place where we bring the best players throughout the world. I think it's going to open up opportunities uh, for club manufacturing, for course design, for players uh, in different parts of the world to be inspired and, and enter the game. And um, I think it's going to be in a much better place. But right now we're in, a, in the disruptions phase. So um, we're in the middle of the process. And um, when it's all said and done, it'll be, it's going to be a lot brighter. But while we go through it, it's, uh, it's, it's challenging. But we'll, we'll get there. Hi guys, George Willis, New York Sun. Um, the majors are the majors, and but with the few times the best players get together at one tournament, has that added a little bit more to the majors uh, in the current state of golf? Bubba, what was it? I blacked out there. <laughs> um, I, I, you know, I. <laughs> Yes, majors are the majors. I mean, everybody wants to win those. It's not about who's there. Yeah, I mean, people can say, we want the best fields, we want this. I want trophies. You know, whoever's there, I want to win. I want to win this week, right? I want to win, lift the trophy. Um, I mean, I play in my club championships at, at the courses I'm members at, right? And I lift that trophy and make fun of the members that I beat, you know? But um, so, you know, competition is competition, and that's where, that's why we're here this week. It doesn't matter who's in the field. You just want to win. Phil, I wanted to ask you about the major schedule this year. Obviously, besides the success at uh, Augusta, you've had runner-up finishes at the other three venues this year. How does this major schedule this season set up for you? I, I think it's awesome. Like, I can't wait for the next four months. Like, starting today, the next four months of golf are exciting with the four majors and some of our best uh, live events here in Miami at Doral, one of, the, one of the best courses in the world, and then going to uh, Adelaide, which uh, was one of the most exciting experiences I've had in golf, uh, one of the, the coolest atmospheres. And so the going to Valhalla, where um, I, I was a shot shy, and going to uh, Troon, where uh, I played really well and, and, and just got beat by Stenson. Uh, and then Pinehurst, where I had a very emotional experience. I, I can't believe it was 25 years ago, but... Uh, it's a course where short game can shine there with the with the crown greens and so forth. Uh, I feel like there are courses that give me a, an opportunity to to have some good finishes um, if I perform well. And John, uh, I think this is the first time since 2017 that you've played the week before Augusta. Have you changed any of your uh, approach this week? Is that true? 17. Um... No, the process has been the same. Right? At the end of the day, is how you how you take advantage of this situation and how you prepare, maybe leading into this week. Right? Uh, I actually was kind of glad to to have a tournament this week, as going into Augusta defending is really the first major championship I'm defending on the venue. So, being at home this weekend could have been a little bit more challenging on you know trying to control those thoughts. But having competition, you just you know, you're here to do your job, and it's great practice to, towards next week. So, I think in any way it's going to help. Thanks. Hi, guys. Phil, it's been 20 years since your first Masters victory. When you think about that, what comes immediately to mind? Is there a minute, a moment, or a memory? And how much did it help to get the narrative about success in a major championships vanish that day? Uh, I mean, it was a sort of a jump. Yeah. Yeah, no, I, I think that, uh, I think that, first of all, the photographer didn't, did not get me at the apex and didn't do it justice. It was the slopes. Uh, but, but I've thought that for 20 years, and then I tried to recreate it, and I realized, well, maybe he did get me at the apex. So, 
but when Ron, when you ask me about what, like what I think about, like I think every time I think I, I look back at that moment, I think of my grandfather. And I, every time I see me jumping and I see that putt roll in it, where it goes around the hole and lips in, I think of my grandfather who who passed away January of that year and told me that 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 this was going to be my first major. And I just, I mean, I'm getting chills thinking about it now because I think about him every time that uh, I, I see that putt and I think that he gave that ball a little nudge in. And so uh, that was, uh, you know, I, I, not a moment that I see that, that picture or that moment do I not think of him. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It was a relief. And um, I think that uh, I, I had said for a while going in that if I win, once I win one, I'll win a bunch. I don't know if six is a bunch, but it's, a, it's more than one. And it, um, it, 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 that win validated kind of what I was doing as being right. I, I just wasn't quite putting it together those weeks. I was making a few too many mistakes but I still needed to play the same way. So I needed to be true to myself and true to the way I play, but I also needed to be a little bit more strategic at times. And so um, that win there, you know, was a relief, it, it, and it gave me a lot of confidence that I could do this more, th more often. Uh, my question's for John, um, and then I, I follow if I could. Uh, when you did your conference call for the – Augusta or for the Masters a couple weeks ago you, you clearly had put a lot of thought into the menu um, you wore a tie which normally people don't do that for the media um, it was but obviously you, you you cared a lot and I wondered if you could just speak to that and how much it has meant to you uh, to be the Masters champion how much you reflect on it and if, you know, if it's, if it's kind of, uh, you know, weighing on you or if you're thinking about a lot going into next week. I, I put, I, I wouldn't say a lot of thought because I think for a long time I knew the idea of what menu I was going to serve if I ever were to win. I know I wanted to showcase a little bit of where I come from. Um, and to be fair, Chef Jose Andres was a lot of help, but like a good head chef, he took over immediately. So you know he <laughs> uh, he did a lot of a lot of that. Uh, but the main thing why I was so emotional was that exactly right. Just I mean, one of my grandma's dishes is going to be served at the the champions dinner. Uh, you know, and it's just a little bit of me and what I come from, which is similar to maybe Jose. Uh, Ali and, and Sevi, but not quite the same, right? Even though we grew up very close to each other's certain differences. Um, it's just an honor to be able to, to do that, right? It's, it's, it's a tradition like any other, like many things that week. And to be part of that selective group of people that have won that tournament and can wear the green jacket with pride and, and be in charge of a menu is, is quite incredible. Um, Definitely one of the highlights of the week, but for some reason, definitely something I'm nervous about. I have no idea why. Uh, but it, it does seem a little daunting having to stand up in front of that group and, and give a speech, even though I know every single one of them has been in my position, some of them more than once. So, uh, I don't know, it just seems you're going to be in that room with the legends of the game, still active and non-active, uh, and, that's, and that's something really cool to be able to say and be able to share. Have have any of you guys been to Augusta this spring? And if so, can you just talk about what it was like? Uh, any changes? Anything? Or just was it just a fun round? Or was it was it more to 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 try to learn something? Uh, I, I I've been there. Yeah, I uh, I wanted to go back at least once before Masters Week. I didn't want the first time back at Augusta National to be tournament week, right? I wanted to get a lot of those emotions out of the way. Uh, and also see the golf course, see if they've done any changes. Uh, you know, pretty quickly when the scored guy came out, I got a million texts saying that it was 35 yards longer. And well, we're going to see what they, they added and what they changed. Um, it's a bit bit of both, right? I'm trying to see the golf course and learn a few new things and learn what they've changed uh, and just trying to have fun. You know, I was able to, uh, a member who hosted me, I was able to bring one of my best friends and share that experience with them, right? So 
it was a bit of both. It was a bit of bit of both. But mainly in my mind was just kind of getting to experience those emotions of being back, going to the champions locker room, seeing my name out there, etc. When was that, John? That was last week. Okay. Yeah. Phil, have you gone? I was supposed to go last week and something came up and I didn't. So I, I uh have not been there. Uh, I'll get there Sunday night and play a little bit more on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday than I normally do. And Bob, are you, have you? No. no. Thank you. Hey, guys. Uh, pro Golf Critic. Uh, this is mostly for Phil, I think. Um, uh, Phil, obviously you've got a great rec record at Augusta. Three wins, uh, 12 top fives, I think 16 top tens. Uh, obviously you've kind of accumulated – a lot of proprietary information. Um, is that something at this point in your career you're willing to sort of impart on some of the younger players like uh, John or, or, or others? Or are you still kind of like uh, holding back some of that information? And John, uh, probably a follow-up would, would be if you are trying to extract some of that information from Phil. So, so I'm happy to share you know, information. There's, there's little, little tidbits that, you know, this putt does this or that putt does that or you want to be over here. That it's pretty easy to figure out, but as you play it over the years, you learn where you can be aggressive and where not to. And it's actually different for myself and Bubba than uh, than than a right-handed player because of our shot dispersion and so forth. I'll give you like one example that you wouldn't think of, like number ten, when the pin is on the right, when it's front right, or even back right. When the pin's back right, if you go in that bunker and a right-handed player comes in there and opens the face on his sandwich and hits a nice high soft shot with a little cut spin, it cuts back into the slope checks up quick, pretty easy up and down. I've been in practice rounds where I've, I've seen the guys throw it up their two feet, no problem. But for a left-handed player, if you go in that bunker and you open up that face, you hit that ball out there with cut spin, it's working with the right to left green. The ball doesn't stop. The best I can do is maybe eight feet. And 10 feet is a pretty good shot. And so that bunker is much more penalizing for me than it would be for a right-handed player. So I have to be more cautious there. But then... Another example would be 12, where it sits along our shot dispersion for lefty. So if we aim over the bunker and we pull it a little bit, it goes longer right, and we can get to that back right pin. If we come out of it, it goes short left and still catches the green. And so 12 as a whole, where we get aggressive, Bubba and I, we're thinking two, and we're getting after wherever the pin is, where as a right-handed player where it sits opposite their shot dispersion, they've got to be a little bit more cautious on that shot. And so it plays different for each player, uh, it's not like that on every hole on every shot and so there's stuff that transcends you know f for instance when the pins um back left on two you you can pretty much miss it anywhere uh except for the front part of the left bunker so that you can get up and down almost anywhere except for that one little area uh and i don't really care for the right bunker so if you hit those shots around the green to the, to that back pin and you know what it does it's pretty easy up and down and so that's stuff that will transcend left-handed, right-handed player or whatnot. I'm happy to share stuff like that, but there's little subtleties, nuances that, that allow that course to play different for Bubba and myself than, than, than John. And then, you know, they can be aggressive on certain spots where we have to be a little bit more careful and vice versa. Uh, and, and, yeah, I do go and ask. Um, I've played a lot of rounds with Phil, and I've never heard him say the word, no, I don't want to share that, or, or I don't know. He really... He's he's been really receptive and very very willing to share that information, and uh, he's told me exactly what he's saying right now, many times, and and many other different things that can help you manage yourself around Augusta National. Um, I've gotten the opportunity to be with him in a non-tournament week and and spend some time where we play 18 in the morning, and then go in the afternoon and and go hit some chip shots and some spots, you know, and true Phil Mickelson fashion are a little ridiculous. Others, you know, you may not think you might end up there, but you can end up there. And the truth is, everywhere we went, he, he himself said, I've been here before, and I've seen somebody be there before, right? So it happens. And if you've seen it, and you've seen that shot be executed, at least you know it's possible. So it gives you a little bit of an edge in that sense, right? But at the end of the day, is what he said is, is managing your game. I think Augusta is a golf course that you can learn to play your own way and you can choose when to be aggressive or not based on how you feel comfortable but then like I said as well there's a lot of shots that may benefit them that don't vice versa the other one he didn't mention is the Sunday pin on 16 
if I aim at the middle and pull it, I might cover that bunker and get close. If they come out of it, it might end up in the bunker or in the water, right? So it's um, you still see things a little differently. Phil, Brody Miller with The Athletic. Uh, I mean, you said it's the disruption phase, and I, I remember on Twitter you joked that, you know, it's step move six out of 37 or something. I mean, how much of the past few years has kind of gone how you expected, you know, in golf, and, and where do you want it to go? Is it on that path? So I knew the first two years were going to be interesting, and uh, how it all plays out, where it ends up, you know, I, I, don't, I don't know exactly. I just know that in the end it's going to be a more global sport and there's going to be more opportunities. We already have 52 uh, more playing opportunities or, uh, for, or 54 for, for players. Uh, that, that's 54 more job opportunities that, uh, that we didn't have before, and they're on a more global scale. And so we're bringing high-end, world-class professional golf different parts of the world and open up um, opportunities in those countries and getting young kids to see it firsthand the way we did when we went to our local tour event and, and saw the pros for the first time and got inspired. And so um, I don't know exactly where it's going to end up, but um, I know it's going to end up in a, in a more global uh, environment. And you know, one of the challenging things about golf that we don't talk about is that pretty much everybody here, we all watch football. Uh, we enjoy watching the NFL, but we don't play it. Like, I don't play football. I don't go tackle, you know, on the weekends. And and nobody here does, but we all watch it. And golf, you know, a lot of our viewers, almost all, a huge percentage of them, uh, they all play golf. And how do we get golf to the people that don't play golf? Like, that's, a, that's one of the challenges that um, is quietly being addressed with ideas and so forth. And I think that there's going to be some things that, will appeal in the end to people that don't necessarily play that still now want to watch and, and be interested in the game. And so those are some of the areas that are, are being addressed quietly, haven't been discussed yet, but uh, those, are, th those are some small parts that uh, I think in the end we're going to have some ideas. We're already here at Live, you know, targeting a younger audience by decades. And that's a good thing is we, we want to keep the younger generation interested in the game and, and not just um, keep losing fans. You know, we want to keep gaining new ones as we lose some to age. Uh, this is for Bubba Watson. Um, the two years you won at Augusta, you finished tied for second here a few weeks before. Uh, other than that coincidence, or, or was it a coincidence, and other than that, is there, was there any connection between how you played here and how you played there? Um, it's a great question. I don't remember. Um, it's more of just playing good golf. You're playing good golf at the right time. Um, I mean, look at NC State right now, right? They, were, they weren't in the tournament, and now they've won nine in a row or whatever they won. It's just playing right at the right time and playing well at the right time. Um, seems like your misses um, go in the right spots, and then the next week feels like your misses go in the wrong spot. So it's just it's worked out in my favor over those, those couple of years and those couple of moments. I don't like to share my stuff. I can't remember. Right there. Right there. Thank you. Sorry. Hi. Uh, question for John. Compared to a year ago, how, how do you come into this? Do you feel fresher? Do you feel sharper? Do you feel in any way different? And do you feel different? A lot has happened to you over this year. Do you feel a, a different person in some ways as well? No, I don't feel different as a person at all. Uh, I don't think I should, right? Um, well, it's, just, it's a little different. I mean, I won a lot early on last year, and then I went on a bit of a month or so where I didn't play my best, went to Bay Hill, played poorly, went to match play, played poorly. Uh, so I feel a little bit different in that sense, right? Back At that time, I knew I was capable of playing really good, right? Obviously, I had done it all year, but... You know, that month was a bit of a slump, which in a weird way helped going to that Masters because I wasn't an overwhelming favorite. I think Scotty was still more of a favorite than I was. Um, and this year, I feel like I'm playing really good golf, but I haven't over that hump of winning yet. So uh, I feel confident right now. I'm equally confident on my game pretty much any given day of the year. Uh, um, 
you know, I think that's how any competitor should be. But it's just that, that difference of how I've been playing the last few months. But uh, I'm comfortable, uh, a little fresher, if anything, going into this next few weeks. So looking forward to it. Lee McKay, Pro Golf Weekly. This is my first time at a live event, having a great time so far. Uh, Bubba, Phil, earlier this morning I interviewed Peter Uline and Brendan Steele, and they both had glowing things to say about you as team captains. What has the team concept added to the LIV golf? Go ahead. They said, I mean, they you've said done nice things about me? Or Phil. Yeah, no. <laughs> Bubba, you've done a phenomenal job. I mean, you, you've Peter created said great. That you were an inspiration. And uh, Brendan said, Phil, that uh, uh, he's known you for years and you've had a tremendous influence on him as a golfer. Well, I'm going to let Bob answer this because what he's done with uh, seeing, seeing the energy and the way Matt Wolf carries himself, like you've done a phenomenal job on taking an incredible talent and giving him an environment that he's thriving in. You've had a you know, great team success for, for a while. Like, why don't you answer this one? Well, the team golf is just a it's, it's college golf all over again, right? We we love team sports. We pull for the Ryder Cup, President's Cup, um, and so team golf to me is is where the future is. It's fun, um, and being a part of that. And like Phil just said, um, I love Matthew Wolf. I've I've known him for about five years, roughly. Um, we we very similar in the way we think, the way we do things, the way we process things. And so for me to share my experiences uh, in life. Uh, he's not there yet. He's still 21 years away from being where I'm at now. Um, so I'm trying to, you know, try to help him before he gets to my level and he can make the right decisions better than me. Um, so it's been fun. Um, obviously, the team atmosphere is, is a blessing to me. I get to talk to people. I get to hang out. I think he gets very lonely. Uh, it's kind of what Anthony Kim said yesterday. You feel very lonely. Um, even though there might be a million people around. Uh, individual golf does that to me, and obviously to, to Anthony Kim it did that, um, and I think Wolf as well. And so being able to be a part of a team and, and spend time with some other golfers, some people trying to do the same things, you can bump ideas off each other. Um, and so this is, a, this is a joy to my heart, to my mind, to my own family because they see the, the joy I'm having in this. Um, and it's been a, it's been a blessing to my family uh, being able to come out here and, and spend time with some guys and, and shoot the breeze, but, but try to play competitive golf and try to win. Um, and, and having a young guy like uh, Peter, uh, Thomas, and Wolf, um, it, it's inspiring me. I've been working harder in the gym, eating better, trying to do things right where I can get better. Um, now I just got to figure out how to putt. But it's been, it's been a blast to uh, come out here and be a part of this. And this is the dream that we've all saw and wanted to be a part of uh, when we saw that. You see in the paper and reading it is one thing, but actually coming out here and, and living it and, and seeing the growth over the years and the growth of people around us buying into it. And I think you're going to enjoy this week too. Um, competition is real and there's a different element, not just the individual. It's the team aspect where on Sunday, all four balls count now. And it's a, it's a lot of drama out there on a Sunday. Great. Thank you guys so much. Thank you. Thank you.